He had the brilliant idea in 1906, when his book Red Rubber was published, of putting on the front of it a picture drawn from the Egyptian Book of the God of souls being weighed in the scales. And in one pan of the scales, they had a picture of Leopold in all of his regal regalia. And in the other side, they had a simple black hand, a severed hand. And that's an extraordinary symbol, really, of a, of a movement. That is, that is really how to imprint something on people's understanding, to sum it all up in a single image. Antwerp was where the Congo rubber arrived. According to legend, the city's name comes from a confrontation between a Roman soldier and a giant who also cut off hands. Any connection between the city's symbol and cut hands in the Congo is seldom made in Antwerp. It's as though the crimes of the Congo are totally forgotten, or worse, never happened. Un bilan humain, rien ne l'exprime mieux qu'un adage des gens de l'Équateur. Beto fait bolé iwo, le caoutchouc est la mort. En 1920, le Congo compte 10 millions d'habitants. Par rapport à 1880, c'est deux fois moins. Donc en 40 ans, le pays a perdu 10 millions de personnes globalement. Mais dans certaines localités, les pertes s'élèvent à... 60, 70, 90 Donc le caoutchouc a été la catastrophe. Jamais les peuples du Congo n'avaient connu un désastre pareil. Astonishingly, for the time, there were calls for Leopold to be hanged at the new International Court of Justice in The Hague. If there were such thing as criminal prosecutions in international affairs, then assuredly a true bill would be found against the sovereign who obtained not a paltry sum of money, but a whole empire by false pretenses. Instead of being hanged, Leopold was reinvented as a great humanitarian king, a great civilizer. 